afternoon from our winter wonderland here at the Capitol. It looks like spring is not going to come. We're going to go right into summer. And in the legislature, the two education bills are finally wrapping up. The House education bill just passed out of Ways and Means. And the big thing that happened there, in that bill they had an optional school start for Labor Day. And um, it was just stripped out by Representative Anzell from uh, the northern part of the state. Uh, for the fair and for the businesses and for the farmer and their workers and it actually his amendment passed to take it out of the bill. I imagine we might see that come back in conference committee. In the House their target was 550 million dollars with a zero levy target and they had 951 million dollars set aside for the tails of the programs that they've instituted. So everything that's new will continue to be funded over the years or at least that's what they're anticipating. They uh, had a couple definite goals. One was to make sure that students had a good path to the career and workforce, so that they were career and workforce ready. Um, that moved the needle for the achievement gap. Uh, in, in 2007, they hoped to close the achievement gap completely and have 100% uh, graduation rate. And um, of their money, 97 to 98% goes into the classroom. They had five main um, areas where they spent their money. They spent $315 million goes to the formula. They increased the formula by 2%, which is about $209 a student, in both years. Um, $102 million went to fully fund all-day kindergarten. $50 million went for early learning scholarships. Uh, $30 million went to an enhanced equity, which put $300 on the operating referendum and about 150 million or so on property tax relief, increasing the equity of uh, the operating um, referendum. So that was a lot of the discussion today in Ways and Means. In early childhood, they try, are trying to align education from early childhood all the way through to the career and workforce readiness. Um, the new student assessment is in place and the grad test is gone and all the benchmarks have to be met, which uh, people are saying, well, there's no cutoff test, but if you pass your benchmarks, that is your cutoff score. Um, they reinstate the integration aid, and uh, they add some accountability measures. And as I said, they took out the Labor Day flexibility. They do not pay back the shift, which was a big thing at the beginning of the year. However, the shift payback has increased as the revenue flow in the state has gotten better. In the House, they do not fund uh, the safe and supportive school bill. However, they do add $5 to the uh, safe and school monies that they give to schools. Okay, They don't fund the teacher evaluation, which is a mandate on schools. and. Um, they do, however, change the K weighting from, to 1.0 from 1.115. Um, there are, they were three centers of excellence. They now fund nine of them. Special ed is 10% is going to be paid by the serving district. And as Re Chair Marquardt said, it gives everybody some skin in the game. That is going to be a cost to uh, our school districts greatly. Um, they add uh, one cent to the school lunches. However, in the Senate, they add two cents to the school lunches and they increase the compensatory amount that schools can use for the top 20 schools that get compensatory. In the Senate, the bill is completely different. Um, they had a $352 million target with 150 in levy. Now in the House, because of the zero levy uh, target, we could not do the increase in the, in the operating levy and a lot of other things that we wanted to do. So our hope lies with Senator Nelson and we're hoping that she will vote for the bill and be on the conference committee because she is the one who is carrying our water, so to speak, in for uh, the bills that we have brought forward for Rochester. Um, they also do $150 million in property tax relief. They do a levy for safe schools. They change that to aid. For, so you don't have a safe schools levy anymore. You have safe, safe schools aid. Um, the operating cap becomes a revenue for all schools. Equity aid turns into $56 per pupil. Career and technical aid has $16 million additional dollars put into it. Um, there's an additional $9 million for special education. 
Uh, they have additional funds for testing, and they foot, uh, as I said earlier, two cents on the school lunches, which counts up to forty or to four million dollars. They put funding in the reading and math court, um, and they put, um, and they ended up fifteen point five million over their target in the last education finance committee hearing. Um, uh, uh, Senator from Anoka put more money on the compensatory pilot projects. Well, that put the entire bill out of balance, but it was passed out of committee that way. Now, the policy bill in the, uh, in the Senate is traveling separately from the finance bill, whereas in the House, they combined the, the finance and the policy bill into one. Um, that, that finance bill ended up going to finance committee in the, in the Senate, where uh, Chair Weger introduced an amendment to cut back the overage and to change funding in different ways. And one of the things that they do is they drop the teacher evaluation mandate, and they don't put it into effect until 2016. So there's no money attached to it, but there's no mandate attached to it either. I have to say that the Senate education bill is um, very contrary. It's very um, different than the House bill. It's laid out in a very different format. And um, I don't know how to say this politely. When questions are asked, you get two or three different answers. So it goes to taxes tomorrow in the Senate. It's going to be interesting to see um, if uh, Chair Scoy allows any amendments in there that aren't tax related. We do have um, Senator Nelson on that committee too. And I know she's thinking about or planning on doing some amendments on the floor to the education bill for the things that we want for local control. I will also tell you that in the committee, uh, the Republicans alone offered amendments for local control and everyone was defeated on a party line vote. Uh, it's been a really interesting session. It's not going to be done yet. They're having session on Saturday, and I think possibly the education bill could be up at that time. I'm waiting to see, but I wish you all a very warm day in the future sometime, and we'll let you know what is happening as things occur.